I've been a software engineer for the last 10 years. I started programming in elementary school, did it throughout high school, went to university for a computer science degree, landed a job at Microsoft, dropped out of school, and then eventually built my own companies. Now today, I wanna to share with you the five lessons that I wish someone had told me earlier because they would have made me far more money and saved me years of wasted time. So the first lesson is that your value comes from solving problems not from writing code. When I started getting into software development, I really thought of myself as like a machine who would sit down at the computer, you know, type super fast, write all this complex code, come up with all of these algorithms and just do, you know, cool, interesting things. And I think a lot of people, when they start getting into it, that's what they think of themselves as, right? I know the syntax, I know the language features, I know all these, you know, weird things that other people don't know, and I can like blitz out all of this code. And as much as that's valuable and you can use those skills, at the end of the day, code is really just a way to solve problems and really to automate tasks and scale, essentially, right? Scale some operation. That's why code is valuable. So at the end of the day, the value that you derive as like an individual, as someone working in a company is purely based on the type of problems that you're solving and what solving that problem actually does. So while you can write super complex advanced code and that's interesting and fun, if it's solving a really naive problem or something that's just not really that big of a problem, it doesn't matter how good your code is. So I say this because as I've gotten further in my career, I focus more on what's the important problems for me to be solving, not what code should I write? And that's a really important distinction. And I think as you get more and more experienced, you realize that it's all about the problems that you're solving. It doesn't even really matter how you solve them in a lot of cases. It's just, can you solve really high leverage problems? And if you can do that, you're gonna get rewarded for that. And I've written code where I've made 40, 50, $60,000 for writing it just because the problem I was writing it for was a really big problem and I was able to solve that problem quickly using code. I've also written really extremely complicated code that took me days, sometimes weeks to figure out for things that really weren't that big of a problem and I made no money from it or I made very little money from it, right? So it's all about the problems. Think about yourself as an expert problem solver not as someone who just writes code. Okay, now the next lesson on my list here is to build projects, not resumes. Now I see this far too often, especially with more of those junior developers or people just coming out of CS degrees. They think that everything they need to do has to be related to getting a job. You know, they're doing this project because they want to get a job. They're doing this like internship at a company they hate because they need a job in the future. They're just doing anything, right? Any task that they have in their day-to-day -day life related to programming is purely in the pursuit of making money and landing a job in this career. Now, while those aren't bad things to do, what I found is that I actually was interested in software development. I liked it, I found it fun. And the more that I worked on projects that were just interesting and fun and weren't purely driven by value or landing a job or showing off to someone, the better I got at this, the more confident I became and the way easier it was for me to demonstrate those skills and that confidence in things like interviews. By the time I landed my job at Microsoft, I had built over 200 personal projects. Not because I put them on my resume. Most of them were crap. I didn't use them. I didn't tell anyone about them. I just made them because I wanted to make them, because it was interesting, because it was fun, because it was a hobby, and I genuinely enjoyed them. And that's what started my other YouTube channel, Tech with Tim, posting projects and teaching people coding, not because I was making money from it or trying to build a resume or portfolio, but because I really liked it. And all all of the developers that I see that succeed today, they have some of those traits. They build things and they write code and they design software, not because they have to, or they feel like there's some burden, but because they actually genuinely want to. So I always say this, but try to keep that passion alive for software development. Do things that aren't the most practical. Do things that aren't gonna be on your resume. And the more that you do that, and the more that you build these cool projects and build things for yourself, the better you become, the more confidence you have. And that just exudes when you go into things like an interview. If you've actually built a hundred software projects, even if all of them aren't great, you're gonna speak a lot more confidently than someone who's only built two, where one of them was a tutorial project that they built just because they wanted to slap it on their resume. The more authentic you are, it comes across. And I learned that really early on when I was doing a bunch of interviews. Now, the next lesson I have for you is to learn system design early. Now that means don't just focus purely on leak code and don't don't only focus on the small problems. Especially now as AI becomes more prevalent, the developers that really stand out and that are providing a lot of value are solving the problem of system design, right? And we bring this back to what I said before earlier. Ultimately, 
what you get paid to do is solve problems. And now that the really easy problems like writing a test case or a function can be solved by AI, you need to solve more complex problems that are just more valuable to solve. So the earlier that you can learn system design, the better. A lot of people see it as this really big intimidating topic. And while it can seem like that when you're thinking like, how do I design Google or Netflix or a load balancer or things along those lines, it's just like any other topic. If you do a little bit of studying, if you do a little bit of research, you can learn it pretty quickly. And I would actually argue that system design is a lot easier than something like Leak Code because it's a lot more intuitive. The more practice you get in it, the more that you do it, the more that you read through those examples, the better that you get. And I find that people pick that up a lot faster than something like grinding Leak Code questions. So you might as well just do that early in your career and really be set and present yourself as someone who's a level above where you currently are. And again, the more you can actually implement this in your own projects, the better. Now, this next lesson is one that took me way too long to figure out. And that is that the developers who ship fast just win. And this is especially relevant if you're in a smaller company or even a mid-sized company. A lot of people obsess over code quality, test coverage, the exact feature you use, big O notation performance, all of these like kind of egotistical tech things where you get in a call with three developers and you're all debating like if it should be O of N time or O N log N time or if you should use this framework and all this crap, right? And you can really easily over engineer anything that you want to just trying to you know, present yourself as smart or trying to make this really clever, unique solution because you want to do that. I did this constantly throughout the beginning of my career where anytime I was presented with a problem, I always wanted to be the guy that had the best solution, the quickest solution in terms of you know time complexity. I wanted to come across as like the smart guy in the room. And I realized as I got kind of later into life and later into my career, that at the end of the day, most times you just need to get something done. And the faster that you can get it done, the better speed almost always wins in terms of how fast can I actually get this fix out if I'm fixing a bug, for example, how fast can I deliver this feature and how quickly can I iterate and make changes and test things, right? If something breaks, okay, is what it is. I'll go fix it and we'll move on from there. It's significantly better than spending weeks building something that's just not needed or designing for a use case that's so far out of the realm of what we need right now. And I made all these mistakes when I was building my own tech startup where I spent way too long building the product because I over-engineered the crap out of it when that really isn't what we needed. Now look, there's obviously exceptions. If you're working at Google, if you're working at big tech companies and you need genuine scalable software that's extremely maintainable, okay, spend your time here. Maybe that makes sense. But for most of us, the code just has to be decent and getting it to that, you know, A++ level is really diminishing returns. And you're just going to come across as much more valuable if you get something out fast. If you're the guy that I can message at, you know, 4 p.m. on a Friday and you push a fix at 5 p.m., that's extremely valuable in almost every single situation. Next lesson on my list is to specialize just enough, but to not be a one trick pony. And this is a really difficult line to kind of thread here because you do want to specialize in a particular niche and you can't just be this general developer that knows everything. You only have enough time to get good at like one, maybe two different areas of software development, like backend, front end, DevOps, et cetera. So you do absolutely need a general special specialty story, but you should also have some of those general broad skills that complement that specialty. Now, this again is a mistake I made early on where I jumped between so many different languages. I was like, let me do Java, then let me do Python, let me go C++, let me go Go, just thinking I could learn them all. And if I have 20 languages on my resume, then I'm gonna stand out. Meanwhile, now what I see constantly is that the developers that really get paid the most, they're good in one language, one tech stack. But importantly, they've dabbled in some of the other areas where they're not experts, but they know enough to be able to learn the thing if they need to in the future. For example, I haven't written Java code in like three or four years. But I know enough about it because I played with it a little bit that if I needed to solve a problem in Java, I could. So I have that versatility. I have the benefit of being kind of like a generalist, if you want to call it that. But I also am extremely valuable in Python because I know Python super well. You could argue that I'm an expert in Python just based on the pure number of hours I put into writing Python code. So that's really where you want to be where you have that specialty, but you know enough of these other things like deployment tools, cloud, right? Some other languages where you can figure it out relatively fast if you had to do that. Anyways, guys, those are my lessons for you. If you have a lesson, drop it in the comments down below and I'll see you in the next one.